Good afternoon. Well, part of my job as the leader of an airport is to identify and to characterize the truly great qualities of good airports around the world, take that information back and use it to chart the, the future of our airport, Denver International Airport. I am an architect who evolved into a airport leader. Um, I actually was in charge of design and construction at Los Angeles World Airports when I was chosen as executive director. And I began to use my design skills to run that billion dollar organization. And despite the fact that I took a little deviation along the way, I think my parents would be proud that I still use my highly mortgaged education today. You know, as an architect, I actually see the world and airports differently than most people. I love conceiving the big vision. I love getting into the details. I think Legos are a really cool toy. I like giant picture books. In fact, any book without words appeals to me. I can't walk into a space without critiquing it and wanting to rearrange the furniture. And I plan every vacation around buildings and spaces around the world that I want to see. But somehow this unique vision of the world actually helps me in this amazingly exciting industry called aviation, which I really love. You know, there were times years ago when travelers had unbelievably low expectations at airports. If you were hungry, there was a hot dog rotating on a rod, maybe a, a brown banana, a mealy apple, a bad burger. It really didn't take much to satisfy you then either. A hot cup of coffee, a newspaper, semi-clean restrooms, and you were pretty happy. If you had time between flights, you went to a very mediocre bookstore and prowled. You might sit and read a magazine or do what I did, go to the gate, watch passengers and those endless loops of CNN news. There were no smartphones, there were no emails, there were no cute cat videos. But after all, airports were a place you went to take a flight. It was the airlines who owned that customer experience and who were supposed to pamper you with hot meals and free beverages, pillows, blankets, nice flight attendants. But in a fundamental change in our industry, there was a role reversal. And today, what the airlines offer you is low fares and no frills, and it's the airport that is stepping in and filling that customer service gap. You look at modern airports today, we have iron chefs, gourmet meals, healthy options for you, whether you want to sit and dine in the restaurant or take it to go. Shops in restaurants, they actually rival shops all over the world, and there are all sorts of entertainment options. If you go to Changi in Singapore, which you see here in the shot, you can swim in a rooftop pool, you can stroll through a butterfly garden, or you can ride down that six-story curlicue slide. In Incheon in Seoul, Korea, you can golf, you can go to a spa, you can ice skate, you can gamble, you can go to a museum of Korean culture between flights. There have been a lot of changes in the industry in the last 15 years. I told you one of them, the, the role reversal of airports and airlines. Another big one is TSA was stood up, and with them those horribly unpredictable and stressful checkpoints. And as a result of those, you actually go to the airport earlier and you stay longer in the concourses before your flight. Another change is technology. Everybody in this room has a cell phone, and those cell phones have changed our lives. They've also changed the way we as passengers are processed through the airport. You've changed. Your expectations have changed. You want better food. You want more novel shops. You want experiences when you're traveling. And technology has responded to you and are now offering personalized messages and personalized experiences in an airport. So where are we going in Denver? What is it that our passengers want? Well, over the last two years, we have really relooked at our brand and we did some quantitative studies on our passengers and realized that they fall into six 
generic groups. And then doing a little deeper dive, we realized that there are two of those groups that we can really influence. And if we give them what they want, they'll actually spend more in our terminal. So we are focusing on those groups because they are the highest potential for incremental revenue. We call those groups explorers and elites. And the research we did may not apply to any other airport, but let's just take a look at Denver and our passengers, who they are and what they want. I'll start with the elites. These are your frequent travelers. These are people with very high expectation where they're traveling on business or with their family. They want it all in an airport. They want space to relax. They want a beautiful airport experience. They want a quiet place to work. They're two main drivers of an elite is that they want the best Wi-Fi on the face of the earth and high-end shops. The other, the other category is explorers. I'm an explorer. We're energetic, we're optimistic, we love to travel, we love the opportunity for discovery. What we look for in an airport is something that's very efficiently run and has a high level of service to offer. When we're between flights, we want to see lots of options and we want to be able to socialize. Two key drivers for us are one-of-a-kind experiences and clean restrooms. So as we look at these two groups, what we are doing in Denver is looking at the overlap so that we can, real, we can use, the best of our, the, use our resources to the best of their ability to influence those travelers. And when we look at that overlap, we see that both of these groups want to do their chores when they are at airports. They want to keep their life going. They want to order their kids back to school needs. They want to drop off their dry cleaning. They want to pick up a loaf of bread and a quart of milk on their way back. They want to do, th they want charging stations, power hubs everywhere. They want new and different experiences. They want to see art. They want to ride rides. They want to exercise. They want to keep their life going, despite the fact that they're traveling. And they want services that enhance their lives. They want coat checks for those January vacations to the tropics. They want pharmacies so that they can refill prescriptions or pick up prescriptions that they forgot. They want an airport experience that makes them feel human. And so as we cater to these needs, these two groups will spend more in our airport. If they spend more, we have money to reinvest into our facility. But more importantly, we have money to reduce the cost that airlines pay us to use our airport. That makes our airlines more profitable, and so it's more likely they will add more flights and more cities to our network, which is our ultimate goal. So what are we doing to meet these expectations? Well, so here's what we're thinking. We are trying to develop something that I'll call a boutique airport, a facility that's unique, that's liked by passengers and locals alike, a facility that offers you new experiences. You know, we strive really hard to develop our customer service and make it superior, and we're starting on our core functions. We want more retail. We want better restaurants. What we also want to do is stretch. We want to add healthy offerings, novel re retail. We want to add services that make you say, wow, I didn't know I could do that in an airport. We want to incent you to walk between flights. We want to create outdoor dining post-security in an upright ski environment so you can experience our, our lifestyle. Two weeks from today, we are unveiling our dog therapy program called CATS, by the way, the Canine Airport Therapy Squad. These dogs and their handlers will be in the concourse to help you reduce stress. On November 19th, we are opening the Weston Denver International Airport, a 519-room hotel. It has 26,000 square feet of conference space, two fabulous restaurants that open out onto an 82,000-square-foot plaza. And that plaza will become the new urban space in Denver where we'll hold concerts and events and exhibits. All of that sits above a new train hall. And next spring, we will have commuter rail that will connect our airport to downtown. 
trains will arrive every 15 minutes. It's a 37 minute and a $9 ride from our airport to the heart of the city. And I probably didn't mention this, but it's just mere steps away from our terminal. We really made it easy for you. Next thing we're gonna do, if you've been to Denver, we have this beautiful, iconic tent. You see it in the shot here. We're gonna redo that. We're gonna take the TSA out of that space and we are going to recreate the space as it was initially intended as a traveler's oasis. We're gonna make something that shows off Colorado to our passengers. It's gonna have mountain chic dining. There's going to be stores where you can buy sports apparel and, and sp uh, sporting equipment. You're gonna be able to buy your lift ticket and rent your skis before you leave our airport. And just maybe in that towering space overhead, eh, maybe there'll be a zip line experience, who knows? And that TSA checkpoint, well, we're relocating that. We're putting that in a space that's very private and very quiet, and we're gonna redesign it with TSA to make a new prototype. I have no idea what it's gonna look like at this point, but I'll tell you, our goal is to reduce your stress. If we can make it more efficient, and if we can make it so 75% of you do not have to take off your shoes or take your computers or liquids out of your bags, you're going to have a better experience. You are not gonna feel violated and you're gonna start your trip on a much better note. And we've met with TSA Administrator Neffinger and he's committed to work with us to design a better mousetrap. I'm gonna shift gears a minute and talk about interactive technology if my slide will change. There we go. Interactive technology, it's changed everything in our world. You're using mobile devices to bypass check-in and go right to security screening. Every day there are new travel ops that give you options for your entire journey. Really the, the trend in the industry is to make everything interactive and the industry is responding. Like many hotels, our new Westin is going to use virtual keys. You will not go to the check-in desk. You will get your key on your phone and you will go directly to your room when you arrive at the airport. Our largest carrier, United, just pushed out an update to their mobile app that has an interactive directory of their busiest airports, which includes us. It's not just a wayfinding app but it has an interactive search function which helps you find the services and, and the food that you're looking for in an airport. So what else can interactive technology do? Well, you know, we know a lot about you and what you've done in the past in our airport and where you are. So what if you were strolling our concourse and you got a text message that says, welcome to Denver International Airport. Your flight is 15 minutes late. You have time to go to that cafe 40 feet to your left and buy a latte or maybe a glass of wine in my, in my case. Do you want us to put the order in for you now? Or what if while your flight is landing, you could use your phone as a concierge and say, Siri, pick up my luggage and take it home. Warm up my car to go up the mountains. This is not a stretch. We are using technology in many ways. In fact, we're using social media today to get others to promote our airport. We installed these wish you were here backdrops. It's a Rocky Mountain theme. And we're encouraging people to actually take selfies and post them on Facebook and in Instagram. And they look like old time postcards. So what if, and I know I'm stretching here, but what if concession workers, TSA agents, taxi drivers actually made you feel welcome in Denver? They made you feel special. They made it memorable for you to be in our airport. It really isn't a big stretch of the imagination. It's not a dream because by inspiring our employees around a common vision, we can actually develop superior customer service. Our employees are proud of our airport and they're proud of their jobs and they actually buck the trend and go the extra mile and help our passengers. They assist them when they're in need. And going forward, we can train everyone from the janitors to the security agents to give you a special treat in Denver and train them to know that it is their personal actions that are going to make the success of our airport. It's not a dream. 
I'm going to be really candid with you. Our goal is to empty your pockets. And to do that, we are going to surprise and delight you. We are going to take you on a journey in Denver. We are going to uh, create situations to make us memorable so that the next time you book your flight, you're going to want to book it through Denver or to Denver. Because last time you were there, you hugged a dog. You climbed a, you scaled a climbing wall. Maybe you sat outside and had a, a drink watching planes take off in front of the snow-capped Rocky Mountains. Or maybe because one of our employees just gave you a special smile. Thank you. Come visit us in Denver. Thank you.